you probably left your job so you can have more freedom and time. That's why you created the business you have now. But then you realize the business you created is exactly like the job you left. You're working all the time. So now what? And I get it. I was there. In my third year in business, I started 2017. So in 2020, my business blew up and doubled. And this continued on until 2021. I went from doing monthly events virtually to bi-weekly events, having hundreds of people come to my event from all over the world. I was doing lives every day on Facebook and Instagram. I was also sharing everything in my life. You know, I, I posted what I ate, took pictures of the sky, inserted some inspirational quote. I know I was that person. Annoying. And we're humans. We're not machines. So two years of constantly doing finally caught up with me. And I burned out. You know, the burnout where I was randomly crying throughout the day and not wanting to do anything. I knew what I needed to do to get clients because I know it worked. But I just had a visceral, disgusting reaction from my body of like, I really don't want to do that. And maybe you've been there or maybe you're there now. And I know how much we all love as humans knowing we are not alone. So if you're hitting your business right now, you're not alone. And this podcast is for you. All right, let's drop the beat. Hey, I'm Elaine Lucartas. I'm a business and career coach for women of color and allies. LA Weekly awarded me the number one thought leader and Apple News named me one of the top five business coaches. Done doing the most as a woman of color or ally. And you want to create your own definition of success and happiness? We'll grab your coffee, tea, or boba, and let's do some business and career real talk. Hate your business? Well, the first thing I want to say to you is congratulations. You're like, what? What is she saying? Congratulations for realizing you are not happy and you're doing something about it. You're listening to this podcast episode. So... I'm going to give you four steps on what to do if you're hating your business. Here's my first step. Pause. I'm going to bet you probably hate your business because first, you're not even giving yourself space and time to actually reflect on why you hate your business. That's right. I'm calling you out. Just kidding. I don't do that. I'm actually calling you in. Calling you in to get into yourself. So you give yourself time to reflect and you're doing that with this episode. So I'm just saying from one person who is a recovering workaholic to another, stop using the hamster wheel of constantly working, constantly doing to avoid seeing what's working and not working in your business. Look, addiction isn't just consumption of drugs. It could also be working a lot. I know I just got real. I got real because I was you. I've been there and I used the drug of working so much to avoid what I needed to work on. That's why I was 55K in debt when I first started my business. I wasn't willing to look at my numbers and I figured... Oh, I'm I'm doing good work in this world, helping women of color, the universe, God, Beyonce or Taylor Swift, whatever higher being you believe in will award me. And if you're spiritual at all, I am Reiki certified. That's not how the law of attraction works. It works when you start showing the universe that you're willing to learn and change and you're doing something about it. And for me, it was when I was having a conversation with my boyfriend. I'm like, oh, I need to look at my numbers. And it made me realize I had to create some changes my business from increasing my price point to really understanding what I was spending. Oh my God. I was looking over my spend in how much I spent on retreats before, like three years ago compared to now. It was triple the amount 
It was, it's crazy. I actually just had a session with my bookkeeper. Shout out to Evolve to Finance, who is the best bookkeeping and tax accounting firm within the coaching industry. And I also want to share that when it comes to finances, find a bookkeeper that understands your industry. So I would not recommend Evolve Finance if you have a different business that's not doing coaching or consulting. I would highly recommend finding one that fits your industry. Anyways, I digress. Let's pull me back in. So second tip, I just want to let you know, if you hate your business right now, let's let's talk about like the basics. Let's go back to the intro. When I shared, I would randomly cry throughout the day. And don't worry, your girl got help. I went to therapy, specifically EMDR therapy. And I highly recommend not just every business owner, but every human to get a therapist more specifically especially if you're going through a tough time and you know what despite yes I am a business and career coach I actually highly recommend working with a therapist over a coach if you are having some anxiety or depression with your business yep I said it as a coach because there's blocks and therapists are licensed to help you when you're triggered or when you realize that there might be something going on that's deeper. And I am not licensed. And I care more about individuals who I talk to that they receive the best support. And if you want to know more about the difference between coaching versus therapy and which one you want to do, check out episode 25, where I talk about it with my friend, Dr. Nazanin Mowali, who is a licensed therapist. So highly recommend looking into getting a therapist to help with what you may be going through right now. And I often hear from clients say they found a therapist, but it was a horrible experience. And if this is you, just know finding the right therapist is like dating. And I've been going on and off. I basically go to therapy like, you know, maintaining a car when I need to. I can't control what's going to happen in life. Like I can't control if there's a nail in my tire. And for me, I found an older Asian woman who understood my culture, my challenges. I didn't have to explain things to her. And I'm not saying you have to work with an older Asian therapist. But what I want you to get from what I shared is finding a therapist who you might identify with because it's important that you feel safe. Or maybe you don't need that. What's more important is finding a therapist who will make you feel safe. And only you can decide that. And you'll know. You'll know it in your inner being. I also want to remind you that I am not a licensed therapist. So if you feel like a therapist is not something you need, that's okay too. I am just sharing it based off of my personal experience. So third step, a warning. I know this is something that you've heard from other episodes. But it goes back to what do you want out of your life? And I'm sure it's not numblessly scrolling through social media, but what do you want? Not just professionally, but also personally. Maybe you realize you want to be there at every doctor's appointments for your parents. That's what I do. I take Mondays off and so often like my dad or my mom has a doctor's appointment, like maybe once a quarter. I actually got off the phone talking with a friend in New York who has her own business She's a 12 minute walk from her parents and she loves knowing that if anything happens, she could walk over and she has that boundary because we love our parents when there's distance between us. Or maybe you realize you want to be more present during dinner with your family, but you find yourself having anxiety of more work to do and checking your phone or laptop constantly. Or how often do you want to do vacations? For me, I have a goal this year. I'm recording this episode in the beginning of 2024 of doing quarterly vacations. And my first vacation this year is going to Banff, Canada to go skiing. So fourth step, I want you to journal and answer these questions. But what are things you haven't been liking about your business? And if it helps, I'll tell you what I didn't like about my business back in 2022 when I burned out. I realized I was doing the majority of things. I wasn't willing to delegate. And I will say, based off my experience, not just myself, but even my clients, whether they have their own business or even a director, manage people, a lot of the struggle is 
delegating. Another reason is that I didn't like my business before is I felt like I was constantly on and performing. I was doing events constantly. I was on social media. I would just think about, okay, I'm, I'm at date night. And wow, it'd be really cool if I took this picture of this food, this angle. And then my boyfriend partner would yell at me like, hey, can you just put your phone away? Do you have to be constantly on? And I realized I wasn't being present. Thank God for my partner. I was also feeling resentful of giving so much free stuff away. And I'm not even talking about the events I used to do, even all the social media posts. Oh my God. And guess what? Like, I don't own it. Like Instagram and Facebook ends up owning it. That is why I create my own IP. You should listen to the recent episode I did with Monica on how it's going to change for this year. We're owning your IP, which is why I have this podcast, which is why I have my own blog, which you you could check out at elainelu.com forward slash blog. And despite making a lot like in 2020 and 2021, I was burning through a lot of money and I felt like it wasn't enough. So enough about me. I just had to share about me, not because I like talking about myself, because I know my clients really enjoy hearing my fuck ups and I figured you would enjoy it too. So you are welcome. And it might be refreshing and nice to know that like, oh, I'm not the only one. So what do you not like about your business? And here are some questions I brainstormed for you that might help. Legacy Leader, I know what you're thinking. Elaine, you have such good stuff here. I want more. So if you want more tips and advice for your business career and life, sign up for my Gifts and Gifts newsletter at elainelu.com forward slash join. That's J-O-I-N. And here's three things you'll get when you join because I'm like Santa Claus. I love giving. Number one, funny gifts because who doesn't love memes and pop culture references? This newsletter is so fetch. Number two, receive actionable gifts. That's business, career, and life tips that you can start doing today. Third, the gift of me. Not only do you get my wins, but also my failures, my reflections. My gifts and gifts newsletter is like an up-to-date diary. Think Zynga or Life Journal for my fellow millennials, where I share vulnerable stories, relatable mistakes, and important life tips like what to watch on Netflix, like when's the next Bridgerton season. So if you're ready for those fun gifts and actionable gifts to create a more sustainable life, then join my newsletter at elainelu.com forward slash join. That's J-O-I-N. All right, let's get back to the episode. And another tip is when you answer these questions, I want you to actually put solutions to these questions. So are you doing too much? And like I said earlier, this tends to be your reason why people hate their business. And if you feel like you're doing too much, here's a solution. Make a list of everything you're doing, put a plus sign on everything that lights you up and a minus sign on everything that doesn't. Also, to make this task really fun, play some fun music in the background. Whether you're a Taylor Swift or Beyonce fan, or maybe both, or maybe you can't listen to people and you you need to listen to some lo-fi or some, you know, Bridgerton classical music. That's my kind of vibe right now. And Do you not love how you are marketing your business? Like I said earlier, no longer aligned to doing monthly events. And how did I solve it? This podcast, you're welcome. It's a lot of energy in terms of holding space. I'm a projector. If you're into human design, it's a lot of energy. And at least doing a podcast. Yes, I am spending money to my team to edit this podcast, to put it out on market, but it just took a lot of energy out of me. So maybe what you're doing to market your business just doesn't align for you anymore. And here's another question why that I'm going to ask you and why 50% of businesses fail within the first five years. And I survived it and made it to six years. Are you not making enough money? And The unfortunate thing is based off of data and research, not just even based off of my personal experience or experience, even with my clients is you probably need to raise your prices and 
find a way to get more qualified customers and clients. For example, in all transparency, I raised my prices for this year for 2024. And I am limiting only working with 24 clients at once to ensure each client receives individualized attention and gets results. So that is how I've structured and changed even my own business. So highly recommend going through your numbers. How much do you need personally? How much you need in your business? If you're not sure that you need all that stuff in your business, then ask these two questions. One, go line item by item of, is this helping my clients? One, and then two, is this helping me have a sustainable life? So two questions to ask yourself. Like, for example, and also personally too, like, is this really benefiting and helping me? Netflix, right? Change their roles where you can't share the Netflix password. So I have Netflix through my parents, but because I don't live with them in the same household, Netflix got strict and I don't have Netflix anymore. And I could easily probably get a subscription for Netflix. But I'm like, oh, I really want to spend that. And it's probably what I think $6.99. I'm not even sure. And I decided not to do that. But what I am doing is I'm spending about $160 a month doing Muay Thai, which is Thai kickboxing. That's important to me. I love Muay Thai. It gives me this natural high. I've been doing it on and off since I was 16, but I've been doing it consistently in the past three months and it makes me feel great. So not everything in terms of looking at what you're spending has to do with your business, but also what gives you life and excites you. And by the way, I am not planning to professionally write, but if you do something to me or some to someone I love, just, you know, watch out, watch your back. You probably don't want me to be around you unless you're a really good friend and I love you and you need me to defend you. Okay, I digress. Let's go back. So I asked you the question, what things have you not been liking about your business? Journal about what it is and then provide solutions. Like what is one stuff you can do? Now, what do you like about your business? There has to be something. And if there's not, that's fine. And for me, I love working with a woman of color and allies. I loved doing events in terms of connecting with people. In terms of the quantity of it, that was too much. Which is why I scaled down and do two retreats a year. And if you're wondering when the next retreat is, it's April 18th and 19th, 2024. And you can go to elainlu.com forward slash retreat. So here are some questions to ask yourself. Why did you get into this business? For me, I love supporting fellow women of color. I had my own career coach. She's amazing. Loved her. But at the same time, I found it a challenge because she wasn't a fellow woman of color and it was hard to find a fellow woman of color when I worked with my first coach. And it wasn't because I wanted to be a coach, it's because I needed support in my career. And that was back in 2014. So take some time to think about why you got into this business. What are things you love? And hey, real talk. If you realize that there is nothing you like or love about your business anymore, that's okay. That doesn't mean you failed your business. So it goes back to actually tip number two, not even about your business or what to do next, but what do you want in life? Not just professionally, but also personally. And hey, I get it. If you're like Elaine, I actually don't know. And if you are self-judging yourself, I was there. I remember I was working on a pillowcase campaign. We just won. And my old boss, who I love dearly, he asked me, so Elaine, what do you want to do after? I can help you get whatever you want. And I just stood there. He's like, Elaine, what what do you want to do after this campaign? It's going to end. You're not going to have a job. I'm like, I don't know. It's like, okay, well, let's talk about what things you are good at. And even though we were talking about things that I was good at, it hit me. I did not know what I wanted. And that's when I went to therapy. I mean, I've gone to therapy multiple times, but I knew there was a block. And so if you are feeling ashamed that you don't know what you want, it's okay. I've been there and hey, I am not the only one. I'm sure other people have been. So I highly recommend going to therapists. If you are looking for someone, you can go to psychologytoday.com. Once again, it's psychologytoday.com and you could sort by state because you need to work with someone licensed within your state 
And what's really cool is you could choose by gender, ethnicity, religion, if any of that's important to you. Maybe you're neurodivergent and you want to work with someone who understands someone that has a neurodivergent brain who might have ADHD or whatever it is. So if you don't know, that's okay. Highly recommend going to see a therapist. And if you actually do know what you want, but you're like, I don't know how to get there and you need guidance, then consider working with a coach. And hey, guess what? I am a coach. (laughs) Did you know that? So if you want support in realigning your business, or maybe you want to go back to working at a job, that's okay too. Just know I only work with 24 clients at a time and you could schedule an introductory business and career coaching call with me. I'll treat you like a paying client so we could see if it's a good fit and you're going to receive three action items towards your goals. So you could go to elainelu.com forward slash call. So there you have it. Hate your business. We'll hear four things to do. One, give yourself a time to pause and reflect instead of going into this hamster wheel of working that you're not even mindful of. I don't even know what I need to do to change this. And congrats, you did it. You made it to the end of the podcast episode. Two, consider therapy. If you feel like there's a block, maybe you resonate or relate to like me just randomly crying throughout the day and you could look for a therapist at psychologytoday.com. Third, journal and reflect what do you want out of your life, not just professionally, but personally. And once again, if you have a block, I've been there. And if you don't know the answer to what you want, that's okay. You can work with a therapist, but it's like dating. Find the right one who makes you feel safe. And fourth, journal what you love about your business and what you hate. And with the things that you hate doing, put the next step or action item and solution after that. Like I said, congrats on being aware and listening to this episode where you got help. I know it feels so uncomfortable. But you are doing something about it. I applaud you. And if you found this episode helpful, here are four things you can do if you feel called to do them. One, it would mean so much if you could leave a five-star rating and review. I created this podcast for accessible education for women of color and allies. Each episode takes four hours to create. And not just me, but my team. It takes me one hour to prep. And depending on the episode, another 30 minutes to one hour to record. Then my team spends another two hours to edit and market. Number two, because I care about accessible education, share this with a friend who is eating their business and they want to know that they are not alone and what to do about it. And when you share this episode with your friend, send a personal message on why this could possibly help them. Third, don't forget to hit that follow button. When you hit that follow button, it lets the interwebs do their thing and let fellow women of color and allies like you know how important this podcast could be to support them. Fourth, if you know that something needs to change, you know the life you want to create, or maybe you're not quite sure, and you want support and guidance to create a sustainable business and life, then schedule an introductory legacy business review call with me. I only work with 24 clients at one time to ensure each client receives the results they deserve. So you can schedule an introductory legacy business review call at elainelu.com forward slash call.